not make so much noise fiddling with that lock, Sergeant. Don't worry. But if Barton's in this room, he'll be waiting for us with a gun. Not one gun, but a dozen of them. He's a walking arsenal. Oh, I'm hoping he's a sleeping arsenal this time of night. So am I. There. The door is unlocked. Now get your gun ready. I'm going to open the door. Okay. Go ahead. Right. There he is, Sergeant, in his bed there, fast asleep. Yeah. And look, Johnny. He must have heard himself dropping when he went over the prison wall last week. That yeah, looks like it. His right arm is in a cast. <laughs> he swore he'd never take him alive. Come on, let's get him. Keep him covered now. All right, Barton, wake up. Uh, what? Wake up. Uh, wake up and have a look at this gun in my hand, Barton. What? Gun? Yes, Barton. You ought to know a gun when you see one. You want me to prove it's a gun? Get cute. Couple of cops. A couple of cops are going to take you back to the prison you broke out of. Can't do much about it either with that cast on your arm, and I hope it hurts real bad. It's going to hurt you worse than it does me, copper. It's not covering a broken arm, it's covering a gun. Johnny, look out! Hey, That's two less of you guys I have to worry about. <laughs> Now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. What are you trying to do with that pistol, Barton? Flatten down the firing pin? Just testing the action on a trigger. It's got a nice light touch, but see a real hair trigger. <laughs> Faster than the gun you used on those two cops who came to get you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think you got more guns than brains, Barton. When I got a gun, I don't need no brains. Mm, you find out. Guns do my thinking for me. Well, they do your talking for you anyhow. <laughs> Look, you swore you was going to get Ross and Davis when you got out of jail. Yeah, that's right. You going to do it? I didn't bust jail just for the fresh air. Good. I found out where they live, just like you told me. Good. Davis lives not far from here. Ross has a house uptown. Davis lives closer, huh? That's right, just across town. Okay, we'll let Ross live a little while. It's up to you. In fact, maybe we'll let Ross live till tomorrow so he can worry a while. He might take a powder if you give him too much time. Let him run. I swore I'd get Ross and Davis for sending me up, and I'm going to do it. Come on. We'll get Davis right now. <laughs> You don't have to phone me to tell me about it, Inspector Faraday. What? I heard about Barton on the radio. Well, look, Davis, when Barton broke jail, it was to do two things. Get even with you and Joe Ross. I know. He screamed that at me during his trial when I testified against him. I know he hates Ross, but he's more Bark than Bike. He killed two policemen last night. And what Bark was his gun. I heard about that on the radio, too. So what? So Barton's still on the loose. He'll be after you next. I want to give you police protection. All right. Now, come down to headquarters right away. Now you're talking sense. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come in. You. You. Oh, put the thing down. No. I don't. Don't. Yes. Blackie. Look, if Davis isn't here at his home, where do you think he is? I don't know, Mary. The Faraday says Davis promised to come down to headquarters half an hour ago. He hasn't shown up. Yeah, I think I'll try the door. Well, you know, we'd save a lot of time if you tried doors first and rang the doorbell back. <laughs> yes, we would, wouldn't we? Yeah, let's go in and have a look around. Okay. Oh. Blackie. There's an awful fight in here. This room's a mess. Yes, Mary. If those feet sticking out from behind that sofa over there belong to Davis, huh? I know why he didn't show in Faraday's office. Would you know, Davis, if you saw him? Certainly. It was Barton's trial. When Davis's testimony sent Barton to prison. Yeah. Yes, Mary, it's Davis, all right. You mean it was Davis? That's right, with a knife in his heart. Well, it looks as if that escaped convict Barton got here a little before we did. I wonder if it was Barton. Huh? He never used anything but a gun, Mary. Yeah? And Davis, he was stabbed to death. Well, he might have used a knife this time just to break the monotony. I doubt it. Hey, Blackie, hey. what was that? 
Something in the back room was knocked over. Huh? I'm going to have a look. Stop, Blackie, be careful. First of all, I have to be quick. Oh, this would happen. The door's you jammed. Get back, Blackie. Whoever it is may shoot through the door. Whoever it is is probably getting out the back way. I'll have to break the door down. Stop, Blackie, don't. Let him get away, whoever it is. Be careful. <coughs> Take it easy. There. Oh, my goodness. Room's empty. Yes, Mary. By the looks of it, someone was searching for something. Oh? as torn up as the other room where we found Davis. I know he was chasing whoever it was. He's a block away by now. Yeah, probably. Well, I'd just as soon not have you get any closer to that fellow Barton anyway. Well, I'm not sure it was Barton who was just here, Mary. What? Barton, I'm going to phone Faraday with a little scheme to bring him here. Yeah? After I call, we'll see if he'll call my bluff. <laughs> I'll say one thing for you. Yeah? I phoned both you and Davis to come down here to my office, but you had the brains to show up. Well, you gave me such an argument over the phone, Inspector Faraday, I had to come down. Yeah. And I'm not staying. You're not. I'm not not afraid of Barton. That's what Davis said, too. But two policemen are already dead, Barton's on the loose, and if he keeps his promise, both you and Davis will be dead, too. Yeah, I can take care of myself, Inspector. Yeah. In 24 hours, I'll be taking care of your dead body. Hold it. Faraday, homicide. Hello, Inspector. This is Blackie. Oh, you're all I need. I never thought you'd admit it, pal. I admit nothing. Which is just about what you know, too. Uh, look, bring him... Faraday, my friend, when you told me Davis hadn't shown up at your office, I thought I'd drop in on him and just see why not. Yeah. Well, I know why not. He's dead. Dead, huh? Barton got to him, huh? I don't know who got to him, but I have a hunch it wasn't Barton. And I have an idea I can find out. Oh, don't bother. How soon can you get here? Right away, uh, meaning a half hour. Swell. In the meantime, don't tell anyone Davis is dead. And I mean don't tell anyone. Right. I'll explain when you get here. So long. So long. Uh, Ross. Yeah? I have to leave for a while. I want you to stay here. You want me to stay here or I have to stay here? I'm not holding you for anything but your own good. Look, Inspector. When you leave here, I leave here. And from now on, leave me alone. <laughs> Yes, Mary. It's uh, amazing how alive Davis looks sitting in his chair. Stay back in the shadows, Mary. I may be propping you up, too. Well, the only light in the room is shining on Davis. No one can see me, Blackie. And I'm beginning to think no one's going to come looking. It's only been ten minutes since we set Davis up in that chair. Yeah. And it may be hours before the trick works. You still think it wasn't Barton who stabbed Davis? Yes, Mary, but I think it was Barton we heard in the next room. Oh, and if he comes back and tries to kill Davis, I know I'm right. Oh, yeah, that would prove that Barton doesn't know that Davis is already dead. But it might be... Blackie, look. At the window. Yes, it's Barton. And another man, too. Stay back, Mary. Okay. Barton may be looking in just to make sure that Davis is dead. On the other hand, he may shoot at him through the window. Yeah. Oh, why didn't Faraday hurry? Blackie, he shot at Davis. Duck, Mary. Okay. I'm going to shoot at him. Him. But I didn't stop him. He's getting away. Oh, Blackie, he may be waiting outside that door. I'm careful. ready for him if he is. Oh, darn it, he got away, Mary. Oh. Maybe I did him, but he and his pal aren't in sight. Oh, Faraday's going to be awful unhappy when he hears about this. I'm not exactly overjoyed myself. Oh, I can see that. But anyway, I did find out one thing I wanted to know. That Barton didn't kill Davis. Right. Oh, Blackie, as long as we know who didn't kill him, I know what our problem is now. You do? Well, sure. Who done it? Can I take a picture of you, sir? Have it developed before you leave the club. Go away. If you raise your head from that table, I thought I could take a real good picture. I said go away. I'm resting. Oh, you, Doc. Sorry, didn't recognize the back of your head. Sorry I disturbed you. Oh, it's perfectly all right, my dear. I had a big night last night very serious operation, you know, and I was the chief surgeon. Oh, you're kidding, Doc. They kicked you out of the medical profession ten years ago. Please go away. See, I'm resting. Sure, sure, I'll go. Now, take a picture of you, sir. Have a good mouth. Take a long look at you. Oh, Blackie, sir. Hey, Doc. Come on, wake up, huh? Uh, young man, I'm not asleep. I'm just resting. In a nightclub? <laughs> What do you do your real sleeping in a blacksmith shop? Young man, I officiated at a major operation last night. I'm terribly fatigued. Skip it. 
I was told who you are and where I could find you. Oh? And who am I? I didn't think you knew. Now, man, if you insist on Skip being... it, Doc. Skip it and listen. You're Doc Withers. Doctor Withers? Maybe once you were, but not anymore. What do you mean? I'm Putsy. Well, you should see a doctor. That's my name, stupid. I was sent here to pick you up. Well, that won't be necessary, I assure you. We'll see. Who sent you to get me? Tom Barton. Oh. Barton says thanks for putting that plastic cast on his arm so he could keep a gun underneath of it. He says to tell you it works swell. Well, so my radio informed me. Now, my good man... Don't good man me. Barton needs you again right now. I'm sorry, but I'm relaxing. Barton's in your office, Doc. He's got a bullet in him. He wants you to take it out. Well, I'm very sorry, believe me, but I'm much too fatigued. Doc, you heard what I said? That Barton's got a bullet in him? Well, please believe I'm sorry. You don't know how sorry you're liable to be. Barton said if you don't come up and take that bullet out of him, that I should put one in you. <laughs> Now, back to Boston Blackie. Convict Jim Barton avoids capture a week after his escape from prison by killing two policemen. Later, John Davis, whose testimony put Barton behind bars, is stabbed to death. On a hunch that Davis was not killed by Barton, Boston Blackie makes it appear that Davis is still alive. Barton then appears and pumps two bullets into Davis's already dead body. Blackie shoots at Barton, but the latter gets away. As we return to our story, Inspector Faraday is with Blackie at the scene of Davis's death. Blackie, your story is crazy as usual. But Faraday, as usual, it's true. You heard what the medical examiner said when he was here. It's true, too, Inspector Faraday. Davis was shot after he was dead. Miss Wesley, I heard the medical examiner say the knife won't kill Davis a good half hour or more before he was shot. And, Inspector, as Mary will tell you, it was Barton who came to that window and shot the guy. Which means that Blackie was right, Inspector. Barton didn't stab Davis. If he had, he wouldn't have come here to shoot him. I know all that. And I know two policemen are dead. Now Davis. The next thing I know, Joe Ross will get it. He's the other witness who sent Barton up, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he refuses police protection. Maybe yes, what happened to Davis here, it'll make him change his mind. Give me Ross's address and phone number if he has one. Maybe I'll change his mind for him. Hey, look, Ross wants to be left alone. That means by you, too. Really? Anyway, the guy I'm interested in is Barton. I think one of my shots hit Barton, Inspector. Yeah. If so, I have an idea where I can be found. Where? There's a guy named Withers who was a doctor before he lost his license. Mm-hmm. If he hasn't given up his practice, it makes everything perfect for me. Easy now, there. Look, with this, get right. this bullet out of me and hurry up about uh, it, will you? I just got here, Barton. You can't expect me to do this without getting prepared for it. Yeah. It isn't as easy as putting that cast on your arm was. Who wants it to be easy? I want it to be good. Now make it quick. Working as fast as I can... Now, you just lie here quietly. I have to go into my yeah. other office and get some chloroform. I left it on my desk, I think. Well, hurry, will you? Maybe you've got lots of time, but I haven't. I'll be right back. Oh, you better be. Who is it? Someone to see Doc Withers. What do you want with him? Got a job for him. Just a minute till I unlock the door. Come right in. Thanks, Doc. I'm sure I... Oh, it's you, Blackie. Get out. Get out. Oh, no, thank you. Out of my office. You sound just like Inspector Faraday. Sorry, now that I'm in, I'm going to stay in. What do you want? A man named Tom Barton. Where is he? I don't know. You're lying with us. I have reason to believe he has a bullet in him. And if he isn't here to have it taken out, he was here or he will be. I've never seen the man... And he hasn't shown up yet, so I'll wait till he does. I don't like to keep people waiting, Blackie. Don't move. Well, if it isn't Tom Barton, got it all. Barton, lie down. You're a sick man. Don't you worry about me, then, Doc. Worry about Blackie. He's going to be a lot worse than sick in a minute. My, my, I'm so worried. Barton, don't kill him here. Please don't. Take him out in the country somewhere. Nothing doing, Doc. Blackie's too tricky. Please, Barton, not here. 
Okay, Doc. Go get my pal Putsy and tell him I want a car and quick. But beat what? it, Doc. Do like I say, you'll get the same thing Blackie does. All right. I'll go get Putsy. Now do that, Doc. I'll do the same for you sometime. Shut up, Blackie. Back up against that desk and be quiet. I'm backing up, but it's hard for me to be quiet when I really have so much to say. I'll do the talking. You mean your gun isn't going to speak for you? Shut up. I'm glad to hear that. It's going to speak plenty, Blackie. It's the last thing you're going to hear. Oh, I guess you've got me so nervous, Barton, that I'm knocking things over. Now stand still and you won't. <laughs> so you're the great Boston Blackie, huh? Well, I... The famous Boston Blackie. The guy's so smart he can get out of any kind of a jam. Mm. <laughs> hey, what'd you knock over? That stuff smells... Too much competition for you? Cute kid. You can't do anything cute about me, Blackie. I'm gonna... I'm gonna kill you. Put a couple of bullets in you, right? Right, well, uh... Hey. What's... What's wrong in here? Uh, I'm getting sleepy. I better shoot you before that I... That bottle I... <coughs> I knocked over was full of chloroform, Bart. Uh, I knocked over a bottle, and now you! <coughs> now, Barton, you'll really sleep. When the chloroform started to put you under, I came out on top. <coughs> Barton's up in your office with a gun on Boston Blackie, huh, Doc? Uh, I guess Barton wants you to help carry Blackie out, Patsy, to bump him off. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. It's about time somebody got that guy Blackie out of the way. Well, dead or alive, I want him out of my office in a hurry. Just leave it to me. And I don't want you to be seen carrying him out. I won't be Hey, look. Hmm? There's a guy on the floor outside your office. What? Somebody's standing beside him with his back to us. Barton, you fool. What's the idea of bringing Blackie's body out in the hall? Yeah, why bring him out? I'm not Barton with us. Blackie. This is Boston Blackie, huh, Doc? Yes, Patsy. He's apparently killed Barton. No, Barton's not dead. Just asleep. And your office is full of chloroform. Come on, you two. I'm delivering you both to Faraday. You ain't delivering me anywhere, Blackie. Oh, I'm not. Come here, Patsy. All right, Doc. You're next. No. No, Blackie. Don't hit me. I haven't done anything. Honestly, I haven't done a thing. That's right, Doc. In your entire life, you haven't done a thing. Honestly. Well, Blackie, this is one time we're welcome in Inspector Faraday's office. <laughs> uh, let's sit down and enjoy it here for a change. Well, Faraday should have been glad to see us, Mary. I not only brought in Barton, but Barton's pal Putsy and Doc Withers as well. <laughs> they certainly were a sorry-looking threesome when the inspector <laughs> took them out of here to lock them up. <laughs> Weren't they? You know, I don't understand something. What's that, Mary? Well, if the chloroform you spilled knocked Mr. Barton out... Why didn't it have any effect on you? I held my breath from the time that I knocked the bottle over till Barton was sleepy enough to be knocked out. Oh, I see. Then I dragged Barton out in the hall so the chloroform wouldn't kill him and waited for Doc to come back with Putsy. And then brought them all down here together. That's right. Well, I guess this case is over. Oh, no, no, Mary, it's not. It's not. Barton didn't kill Davis. What? Huh? When Barton shot Davis, Davis was already dead. Oh, that's right. I'm always forgetting little things like that. Well, I'm not forgetting that Davis was stabbed, not shot. Oh? And I have a hunch who did the stabbing, too. Who? A man named Ross. Ross? He hated Davis. You remember him. He was another one of the witnesses who sent Barton to jail. Oh, yeah. Uh, Blackie, you have all three of them locked up. Swell, Faraday. I'll see you later. Where are you going? To see a guy named Ross. I think he figures in the Davis killing. Are you crazy? Why would he kill Davis? He's the only one who can answer that, Faraday. That's why I'm going to see him. Uh, look. Hey, come on, Mary. Okay. I may need your help. Oh, it's so nice to be needed, darling. Goodbye, Inspector. You, goodbye, Miss Wesley. Blackie, I still don't know why you think Ross killed Davis. Well, maybe it's just because I have an evil mind. See you later. So long. Uh, now what? Faraday, homicide. Inspector Faraday, this is Ross. Oh, yeah, Ross. I've been thinking about you. I just heard on the radio that Barton has been captured. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I got him locked up. Good. 
Then your worries are over, and so are mine. I guess so. But Blackie just left here on his way to see you. See me? Mm-hmm. Why? We, uh... You didn't say. No? Hey, Ross, maybe you better come down here and see me Don't again. worry about me, Inspector. I know how to take care of myself. And Boston Blackie, too. <laughs> Hello, Ross. Oh, Blackie. Yeah. Come in. I was expecting you long before this. Oh, you knew I was coming, did you? Yeah, your friend Inspector Faraday told me about it. I see. What took you so long? Almost have a change of heart on the way? No, no, not exactly. No? Uh, nice place you have here, Ross. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Well, uh, take a good look around, because you may soon be moving to other quarters. Headquarters, to be exact. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. What for? For killing Davis. What makes you think I killed him? Well, in the first place, I know Barton didn't kill him. First, because Davis was stabbed to death, and Barton always uses a gun. Yeah. And second, because Barton shot Davis after Davis was dead. That still has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you, Ross. You had a grudge against Davis. It came out when you and Davis both testified at Barton's trial. When Barton escaped from prison, you saw a chance to kill Davis and get away with it, because it would look as if Barton had killed him. You're a pretty smart guy. Aren't you, Blackie? Mm, smart enough to know you killed Davis and why. And also smart enough to find the knife that killed Davis and trace it to you. Yeah? Well, you won't have to look far. Fair to hear that. Here's the knife. Oh, good. I'll give it to you. Right through the heart. No, thanks, Ross. That's your arm. Now, have a sample of mine. All right, Ross, get up. Now, let's okay. take you and your knife to Faraday. Yeah, you're, you're just lucky, Blackie. Lucky you're not dead. Yeah, I certainly am. You know those stars you just saw when I clipped you? Well, I live under one of them. You know, Blackie, yeah. if you ever give up this apartment of yours, I want it. <laughs> I love the view from this window. Well, it is a little better than the view from where Barton, Putsy Farmer, Doc Withers, and Ross are sitting, Mary. <laughs> you certainly made a haul this time, didn't you? And Ross made quite a confession when police proved the knife Ross tried to stab me with was the knife that killed Davis. Mr. Ross wouldn't have tried to stab you if Inspector Faraday hadn't warned him you were on your way to see it. Oh, yes, he would. He was. Faraday told him I was coming in hopes that Ross would make a break, and he did. And we got him to talk. Smart, aren't you? Sure. After I got his knife, it was a cinch to make him fork over that confession. Well, Blackie, you just heard the evidence I gave the grand jury. I heard it. John Sawyer's going on trial for murder, which means this is one case I solved... Without your help. Well, why not, Faraday? You have more evidence against Sawyer than grudges against me. And that's plenty. But congratulations, anyway. I've never had a tighter case against a guy in all my years in the department. It's a switch. It was Sawyer's gun that killed Jones. Sawyer had both motive and opportunity. Don't tell me. I heard the evidence you gave to the grand jury. Yeah. Quite an audience you had. Yeah, if it were you, you would have knocked yourself out taking bars. But me? I'm going to really spring something at the trial. What, for instance? Jones had a brother. Oh, really? He heard Sawyer and Jones arguing just before the shooting. Sawyer left, but then went around the house, came in the back way, shot Jones. Well, that'll do it all right. Is that what Jones' brother says or something you can prove? I can prove it. I have casts of Sawyer's footprints taken from the mud in the backyard. Well, no wonder you didn't need me on this case. It seems to... Hey. Huh? Who's this coming down the hall? Huh? Look familiar? Guys, uh, that's a guy with a lot of dough, a lot of connections. Oh. He's head of the Evans Manufacturing Company. Evans Manufacturing Company? Right. You mean he manufactures Evans's? I feel so good, even bad jokes don't bother me. Oh, <laughs> like uh, morning, Mr. Evans. Oh, good morning, Inspector Faraday. Oh, yeah. I was hoping I'd find you before you left the building. I just heard about the grand jury's decision. You mean on the Sawyer case? Yes. What about it, Evans? 
You say Jones was shot and killed at 5 o'clock last Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, he was. Sawyer was at Jones's house at the time. Inspector Faraday, John Sawyer was five miles from Jones's home at 5 o'clock last Tuesday. What? Five? That's right. He was at the corner of 5th and Elm at 5 o'clock last Tuesday afternoon. At the... I know, because I was there and saw him. 